So, hi everyone. Welcome to Monday Night Circuits of r and I'm Alex, the instructor today. Uh, today we're going to do the usual Monday thing of going through a full body workout. Uh, we're going to hit all the major movers of the whole body. Just trying to fill in all the gaps, uh, you know, strength-wise, uh, that you know, our sort of aerobic training miss out. So this is, you know, not to make you super strong, but it's going to be I uh, basically uh, to try and make you strong enough to do your chosen activity as well as you can. So we're not going for maximal strength, but we're just going for a good amount of strength. So that's generally why we mix in a bit of um, you know, body weight exercise and with bands as well. So hopefully that's uh, exactly what you need. Okay. So uh, just give me a quick wave to show that you're fit and healthy and you haven't got any injuries that are going to cause you a problem or anything like that during a session, just so that you, you know that you're safe and I know that you're okay. Brilliant. Okay, thank you for that. So a quick warm-up to begin with. So you can lay out your towels if you want or just use your mats, up to you. Just make sure you've got enough grip on your hands. You're going to really gently just, just get the upper body and the lower body connected in, in the way that we're moving. So we're going to hinge at the hips, try and elongate the hamstrings, Get the glutes elongated, keep a nice flat back, nice tall neutral spine. As you reach down for the floor, feel a nice stretch coming up all the way through there. I mean, contact the hands down and then make yourself nice and stable. And then just walk out. And each step, just gain stability. And use your shoulders to lock yourself in place and just keep everything nice and stable until you reach plank. Then just pinch yourself in at the belly button just to really get that core activated nice and strong. And then stand tall in this position because you might be a little bit hunched over. Just elongate the upper back so you go into a nice, perfect plank. Could just take a quick peek in the monitors if you can, see what you're doing. And then we push back. Now use your shoulders to power this movement back as you walk your hands backwards, keeping your legs straight. And you just work walking back to the starting position. Then we come up to balance point and come up to standing. So you go a little bit quicker next time, but just go for the core stability, shoulder stability. All the, the muscles are waking up is really what we're doing now. Come into your plank, pinch at the stomach, stand tall in this position, elongate the upper spine, get rid of any hunching that might happen. Elongate your neck. Nice, good, a perfect plank, and then start pushing back through. And back up to standing again. Last time through, nice straight legs. Get a better stretch this time, hinging at the hips, trying to keep your spine as neutral as possible as you reach down to the ground. Then walk forward. Wake up those shoulders, pushing down into the ground as you walk forward. Perfect plank. Pinch at the waist, at the navel. Elongate your spine so it's nice and straight. Everything's in a nice straight line here. And then push back up. Okay, sit on your bum. And again, we're going to open up the other way. So you're going to do a little um, reverse plank. So put your hands roughly underneath your shoulders, near your hips, maybe a little bit behind the hips, and just come up until you feel a bit of tension. Now push your hands down, keep them straight, keep your elbows straight, almost locked, and then push up with the hips as much as you can until you come up into an exact straight plank. Pretty much what you had before, but just reverse. And just feel the tension probably in the front of your shoulders and your chest and everything like that. And that's where the tension is going to be. And you're pushing down and you're trying to open that up. Whilst also using your core to keep your body nice and straight. And you can come down and rest, shake that out if you want. Reset your hands, get a nice comfortable wrist position. You can change the rotation of your hands if that suits you better. And then come up again, using the glutes, hamstrings, everything to push up. Nice tight core, keep your abs tight like you're going to be punched. Stand nice and straight at the body, make it a perfect plank. Just take a quick peek in the monitor if you can, if you can see yourself or mirror and just see what's going on there. And briefly after that's done, come down onto the mat. So go for a frog stretch. So that's going to start off in a kneeling position, go really wide with the legs, like so. Make sure everything's nicely squared off behind. So 
feet directly under the knees. Then we come down and contact onto the floor. So get, use your elbows for support. And we like this. So what we're going for here is trying to mimic a bit of a squat position. So you can get your head, forehead a little bit closer to the ground. And then we're pushing back as if, imagine if we stand, we're actually standing with this one and we're going into a very deep squat. So you're not going for pain or anything like that in terms of the muscles that you're stretching. It's going to be your inner thigh, something in your hip, but it's going to be very manageable and you're just going in and you're going out of that position. Just oscillate between these two and just go to the point where you feel a bit of resistance from your body. Hold it there for a little bit and then come through, and back out, then go back in again. Try and go a bit lower. And again, you can be gliding your forehead quite close to the ground, but maintaining a neutral spine, especially when you get to the bottom. You find that you might want to curl your spine. You know, losing that arch, you want to try and keep that neutral spine there. Push your hips backwards down into that squat position and feel that tension build up in the hips and your adductors. And that's what you're working. One more time. And then back out. Okay. If we come up, just try and get a lot of hearts up a little bit and do some easy squats. So go nice and wide with these ones. Stand up. Have a look down. You're going slightly wider than shoulder width. Knees tracking over your toes. Definitely helps to have your, your, your toes pointing outwards sometimes. It allows you to get that depth. What you're going to do, you're going to squat down. But you can try a name to go right in between your heels and your arch, effectively. So that's what you're trying to sit down on. So you're trying to keep an upright body and then sit up. So you're trying to keep the hips forward and then just going just right down in between the feet rather than doing this and leaning and keeping the hips all the way back. It's just more upright. And that's using the flexibility in the hips more and it allows you to develop a better squatting pattern. Just go at your own pace. Just really gently just warm yourself up into this one. Just trying to get the ankles moving, trying to get the knees moving. Just trying to warm up those joints before we start our exercise in a minute. So just keep going through that a few more times. Just until we start feeling warm. Now throughout the whole class, we try and focus on this posture, this neutral spine that I keep talking about. And that's what you're trying to maintain through pretty much any exercise. Just make sure you're not hunching over or changing the distance between these two points. So your sternum and your pubic bone should pretty much stay the same the whole way through. Just a quick bit for the ankles. Going to downward dog. Nice high A-frame, and then just march the heels up and down, getting a nice stretch on the calves, taking your ankle for its full range of motion, complete, completely uh, plantar flex to dorsiflex, so from pointed to completely up. That's just to get that ankle joint ready for what we're going to do now. Let's keep marching those ankles up and down. Also use it as a bit of a stretch for your hamstrings as well. And finally, just come through. It's a nice big lunge. And rest that knee on the floor behind you. And just open up the front of this hip. I'll swap sides so you can see a bit better. This hip, just pushing that hip forward. Just get this bone here. That sort of pointy bony prominence in the front of your pelvis. And just try and bring it forward slightly. Leave everything else as it is. Allow your body to stay neutral again. Just push that forward. Let the knee drag behind you. And that brings in a nice stretch down the front of this leg at the, here. And you can hold it there. Come out. And then go back in. Just waking up all these different muscles. Just getting ready to move. Swap sides. And just give them a little bit of a, a lengthen before we start adding any load to them. OK, 
Okay. A few more rounds of that. Just lengthening that hip flexor at the front there. And then we're ready to start our work. So with this, with most of these exercises, just treat the first round as a little bit of a warm up. So you've got varied amounts of resistance that you can add, especially if you're using a band. The tighter you wind up the band, the more resistance you're going to have. So this first exercise, you can do it with your foot on the floor, or if you have it available, it's a little bit better with a chair or a box behind you. So you can do it like, like so, but I prefer to do it with just a little raise in the back foot. So get your band, hook it under your foot in front of you. So it's going right underneath the arch. You're actually standing on the band. And this is where you can wind it up to appropriate level of resistance. Just get that set for yourself. You can loop your hand through the band like so. And then just sort of stand up. So get yourself to your ready. So this is your starting point. And then we're going to do a few Bulgarian split squats. So you go down, keep a nice upright body, and then back up again. So go down as, as low as you feel comfortable. Go down, or you can use a, dump, a kettlebell as well with this one, but I'm just demonstrating with a band. So you're going for about 10 reps or so. So I'm reaching about four here. As low as you can, maybe go a bit deeper with each rep as you warm up. And that's nine. So hopefully you can feel that quite strongly in your quad and your glute. And now without changing legs, stay on this side. We're going to do a deadlift. So where are we bending the knee at the front? You keep it slightly straight, a little bit soft, and then hinge at the hips, leaning forward, and then come up as a deadlift. Still using the band's resistance, mainly trying to hit the glutes here. Nice straight back, lean forward, a little bend in the knee, and the leg stays pretty much fixed. That's four, so hopefully you can really feel that working, the glutes. Right now, so that's five. Six, so very much a hinge, rather than anything involving movement of the knee. So everything is going about the hip. And one more. And there we go. So just release that resistance and swap sides. Just so you can see, that's where I had my hand. You get a lot of resistance in that, so you're not really losing your grip. You can have that. My foot was there underneath, like so. Just so you know. Okay. Next, next side. Hook it under the, the um, arch again, get your hand in there, ready for the grip, get the non-working leg up on support and just find the right distance from the box for you. And just gradually slowly stand up into the starting position. And now we bend the knee, keeping the body upright and then back up. So very much focusing on the quad, on this one and the hamstring. So that's three for me so far. Nice upright position, dropping down low. Hope you can see the two similar exercises, but also different paired together. So that's seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now folding, hinging at the hips, using the glutes. Just go down as low as you have control. Neutral spine, whole way, hinge. Use that glute. Two. Three. Four. 
nine, and 10. Good. Very starting to feel that one. So you're going to keep going round for these exercises, pair back to back. So that's one round, we've got two more. So now you can change the amount of resistance if you felt that was really easy. Try and get a few more uh, layers of band around your hand. If it is difficult, then loosen it off slightly, just so you've got control. And if you see me, I've got it this way. So I've got my band going across the body onto the opposite foot. You can do it either way, but I find this one really hits the glutes a lot better. Okay, so if you're ready, another 10 reps of each. Knee bend, Bulgarian split squat, all the way down, and then back up. That's two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. So hinging at the hips, push back a little bit with that hip as you keep the, the slight bend in the knee, but really just focusing on this movement about the hip. That's two, three, four, five, nice flat back, nice and tall as we practiced in the plank at the beginning, nice tall, long spine. Eight, two more, nine, last one, and 10. Swap sides now. Let's get yourself set up. Get that balance. And Bulgarian split squats for bending the knee. We go down as low as you comfortably can. Back up, nice upright body. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now hinging, we go one. Nice tall posture. Three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Brilliant. Okay, shake out any fatigue. Set yourselves up for the next set. So, again, being tired after these couple, it's fine. Just ease up on the resistance a little bit. Or you can ease up on the reps. It's really about getting as best form as you possibly can for each and every rep. And we're just practicing. So if you're ready, go for a nice standing position. You can set yourself up with two feet to begin with. Get the band taut or the weight up and then step back. Okay, bending the knee. Upright body, we go for one, two, three, 
Trying to keep those hips level. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. And nine. And ten. Hinging at the hips, straight back. Hinging around, using the glutes. That's two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. And nine. Last one. Best form yet. Ten. Okay, plant that foot down. Swap sides. Last time through. Two feet to begin with. Get yourself set up. Get tension on the band. Step back onto your support. And go bend the knee. Upright posture. Chest nice and high. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. Hinging at the hips. Straight back. Nice and tall. One. Hips all the way through. Especially at the top. So that's four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And 10. Brilliant, okay. Take a well-deserved break after that. Just wipe yourself down. You got any sweat going on? Take a quick sip of water. Does it open the door? Right, so that's our lower body done. We're gonna move on to upper body next. So hope you can feel your quads, your hamstrings, particularly your glutes on that one, should be pretty well done. Just give me a quick wave if you can feel them. Brilliant, that's good, I'd like to see that. Excellent, okay, so first exercise. You can do this with or without a band. It's press-ups. If you feel very strong on press-ups, if you can do 10, then add the band and do less reps for good form. So, depends how you are with press-ups, you can do if kneeling is hard for you and you can get eight, then go for that. That's fine. If press-ups are hard for you and you can only get five to eight, go with that. But if you can do 10 full press-ups, then get your band, hook it over your back like so, and I like to have it underneath my arms, completely underneath the arms to begin with, and just do like so. And then, if you can see, I hook my hands in there. So I've got a nice thing to push at each time. And you know, if you just want to give it a go for a couple of reps, then maybe on the second set, add in the band. Use this one as a bit of a warm up for your pressing movement. So go for 10, but very much just tax yourself as much as you can. Five is a good number to hit if you're really pushing yourself in terms of strength. So that's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Put yourself 
slowly out of that one. Okay, so now we can either go with a dumbbell or a kettlebell or a band, but go for one armed rows. So you can support yourself on the wall or anything that's suitable. Again, nice straight back. Get the band hooked under your foot, your front foot. So actually, if you go from opposite arm to opposite leg, you can be in this staggered movement. If not, you can just use a kettlebell that's straight down here. You can hook your hands through to get a good bit of tension. And we're gonna row. I'm just gonna row to the bottom rib, just about. I'm gonna pull really hard. So that's two. Three, remember what I say about neutral spine through everything. No hunching in the upper back. Nice and tall, all the way through the neck, upper back, all the way through the spine. So that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Swap sides. If you're using band, opposite side, so opposite leg, just so you can see what I'm doing this way. Got a couch here, and we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, and ten. Okay, so you've got two options for the next one. It's going to be third exercise in this one. You can, if you want to, you can go for the shoulders, you're going to be pressing. You can either do a pike press, like so, or if you've got a band that's strong enough, like we're just using. To go for both feet in the band, one hand like so, and then we press above the head. So I just stand over here so you can see my arm. I rack the weight or band here and just press straight up. Either of those would be good. So that's two, three, four. Five. And if you've got a single band that's just long, you can just stand one foot. There we go, like that. Either way, if you're using two feet, you can vary the resistance more by going wide for harder or narrow for easier. So I should be hitting about seven reps here. That's eight and nine and ten. If we get much harder in the next round, to so swap sides, do the other arm, and we go one. You can use any weight for this. You can even use a kettlebell. That's three. Depending what you have available, depending how strong you are. That's probably about five, six, seven, eight, nine. And 10, brilliant, okay. Back round to press up. So, sticking with what's working for you, set yourself up for the next round. So you'll be able to pick up the speed a little bit now through these, just to build a bit of fatigue. And again, if you hit five, six, seven reps, and you fail, that's great. You're working in the right sort of area to get improvements. So if you're ready, we go for 10 and see what happens. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, almost for me. That's good. Nine. On my knees now, get last couple and 10. So it's good. So that was about right for me. 
Hopefully you had a similar experience to get to that point. Almost can't make the last couple of reps. So loop your bands around, doing double, double loops for these rows. Opposite arms, opposite foot, staggered position, or just as you would normally with a dumbbell or weight. So you've got the setup. Let me go through the reps. We go one, two, three, four. Try and keep your shoulders away from your ears when you do this. Pull and press the shoulder as you pull. So it's eight and nine and ten. Get the sides. You know what to do. So already, but keep the shoulder away from the ear as you pull. One, two, nice neutral spine. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And 10, brilliant. Straight on to the shoulder presses. Remember you're using a band, can't grip, adjust the resistance. Now try to start off with the other arm first. And off we go, one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, a bit narrower if you're finding it hard, nine, and ten. <laughs> there we go, swap sides. That's the bar, all the weight. Up we go, one, two, three, four. Five. Eight. Last couple. Nine. And uh, ten. Almost didn't make it. Right. Last time round on these ones. Doesn't matter about reps anymore. Just going for the good form and as many as you can do. Always trying to tax myself, so don't pick anything that's too easy. As long as you can do a good three or four reps to begin with, then you can break it down into sections. And just after you fail, do one rep at a time. So if you set up your band now, ready to start, and off we go. So one, shoulders away from the ears, two, Nice and tall posture. Three, four, five. Okay, I'm done there. I'm going to take away the band. Five more. One, two, and now I'm on my knees. Three, four, and five. It's definitely getting towards failure for me. And I've just dropped it down as I went through. Great for developing strength there. Okay, onto the rows. It doesn't matter if you're not hitting failure or anything like that this time. Next time you just pick harder exercises, get bigger bands and go from there. So with the row, we go one, two, Three, four, five, and hold. Last five, we're going to hold. Four, three, hold it. Two, and one, and release. Brilliant.
we do the same again. We're going to do five straight through. Then we're going to go five. Do a bit of an elongated hold. So if you're ready, other side. One, two, three, four, five. Now hold. Five. Hold it. Hold it open the ears. Four. Keep form. Three. Two. And last one. Nice long hold. As high as you can make it. And then release. Straight on the shoulders now. Feeling tired. That's good. Just do what you can. Set yourself up. And off we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm starting to lose form there. Go step out. Last couple. One more for luck. There we go. Okay. So just adjust it for yourself. The second you start to really drag, and you can just step out and do the easier form. Off we go. Other side, that's one. Two. Three. Four. Six, seven, eight. I'm stepping out there. Got two more reps. One and two. Brilliant. Okay. Well done, everyone. That's upper body done. I think time. Brilliant. Okay. Do a little bit. Just as it's winter. Don't normally do isolation exercises, the arms or anything like that. But just for change, we do some curls. Okay, so only for a few months that we do this. You stand with your band or dumbbells. It's up to you. And you can change resistance again, either by wrapping it around this way. So as you do a curl with two arms, you can do it on one hand where you take up some slack that way, depending on how strong your band is you might not need to do that but it's fine and then we go with a barbell curl or a dumbbell curl there we go one nice and slowly with bands two three four five six Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Great. And this one, slightly different one. Set up the same as you would, would do with press ups. It goes under your armpits, like so. So you've got to set up here, all the way under. It's coming right under my armpits, my arms on the outside. Reach up exactly the same as you would with a press up. And we do for triceps extensions. You can go that way. If you feel better, you can do this one on the floor. That makes you feel better and more stable, but you can do it standing up. So off we go. You bend the arm right angles. And that's one. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. We quickly back round the biceps. Judging how you felt in that last round, you might want to loop it round again. Depends if it felt easy for you or not. 
So here we go. We go for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Back on to the banded, they call banded skull crushers. If you've ever been into the gym, um, uh, use the bar to do a tricep extension in the back. Call the skull crusher because you, you drop the bar on your forehead, you crush your skull. But anyway, for us, safety of a band. Here we go, one, two, three, four. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, flying through these quite quickly. Adjust the band to your desired level for this last set. Whatever works for you. Set yourself up. Briefly shake out any fatigue. Off we go. Here we go, one. Two, three, four, five, six. I'm finding that hard, I'll be honest. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Last time, last exercise. All feeling pretty good. Set yourself up, stand up for for a change. Let's see, I can see you all. Get you ready. Let me go. One, two, three, oh dear. <laughs> four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And last one. Ten. Brilliant. Okay, that was really hurt my front delt as well. Actually, it's quite getting quite tough. Okay, so if you're ready to move on, we'll start a little bit of core. I'm going to spend a nice bit of time doing some rolling and some stretching as well. So for today's exercise, if you've got little hand weights, you can grab them for this exercise. I don't have any hands, they've been hidden. <laughs> but it's the overhead sit up. So imagine you've got a big weight here. You can have your legs either straight or slightly bent, depending on what feels good to your back. Imagine this is a huge weight and you're just going to press it up, but you've got to keep it over your head. Because if you didn't, it would fall because it's so heavy. So practice that. You can use little dumbbells for this to give you a sense of that weight and add a bit of resistance. So we'll curl it up. That's two for me. We're going to go for ten. And turn vertically off the floor. So it's completely upright position. And then back down. So weight is always directly above the shoulder joint. Going to do five more. That's four. Three. Two. And one. And then we'll do the reverse of that. Four. That's what exercise to the lower abs at least anyway. Nice leg raise. Get your feet hovering off the floor and just come up to right angles and then slowly lower. Always trying to focus on what's going on with your lower back. Keep those ab muscles on and tight. Keep the lower back pushed safely into the floor 
especially at the bottom. If you feel that your lower back's peeling off the ground, really get those front abs tight and support that structure at the back. So we go two, three, nice straight leg is again, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, <coughs> and ten. And we're on our backs ready, so we go back to the overhead pick up. And it doesn't matter if the one gets a bit harder as you go through, attaching the muscles from different angles, but just go for the form. I'm going to attempt 10. So you just go through the time it takes me to finish, focusing on your form. So that's two, three, and four. Put the weight down for the roller back on your back. Nice straight leg as you can. Remember the back, remember the core. Straight legs, lower down as far as you can without compromising your lower back, and then raise back up. So one, keep it tight here. Two, all the way down to the bottom, nice and tight. Four, five. Six. You need to rest. Take a quick breather. Got four more. One, two, three, and four. And we go on to our last set now. Overhead sit up. Just do what you can. Set yourself up. Roll up. Vertebrae by vertebrae. Let's see. Three. Four. And five. Good, keep going. Might be getting difficult now. You can start. So reach in front of you if you need to. We've got three more now. Two more. Last one, make it a good one. And that was about right, wasn't it? Brilliant, okay. Made it through. Now with the leg raises, you can, if you're struggling like me, you can stay a little bit higher in the range. Uh, go all the way down, as long as you're keeping the back in a nice alignment. So we go for two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, last one, and ten. Brilliant. Okay, so that's the hard work out of the way. So if you grab your rollers now, you can start off with a roll, and you to roll each area, uh, starting through the quads. Immediately afterwards, we'll do a stretch on the same muscle. The idea being here is to get the muscle loose, nice and loose, 
and then we stretch it further. So we use the roller to really ease it up. It might be quite tense because of the work that we've just done, or just because they're tight anyway. The roller releases, then we stretch to try and elongate the muscle further. So with that in mind, get the rollers out and you're going to roll the quads now. So start in the high hip, as high as you can go. You can do both quads on the roller at the same time. You can see I've got it as high as I can get it in my hip. I'm running across the hip flexors and the quad muscle. I'm just going to roll through, as we've done many times before, all the way through the muscle, like rolling dough. I'm just searching around, as usual, for any areas that are really particularly tender compared to the surrounding tissue. We're looking for trigger points. And you can roll up and down fairly smoothly to begin with. You can turn your feet in, you can turn them out. And then once you find an area that needs work, then you can really slow down and concentrate on that particular bit. So you've done a sweep of the muscle, you found the area that you're interested in working on, and then, then you start just before it, roll onto it, and very, very slowly, just sit millimeter by millimeter, roll through it until you pass through out the other side. And then go back and start again. Find that bit, roll it, sit on it, just keep moving, but ever so slowly. Roll through, out the other side, and then continue. See if there's anywhere else that needs work. You can change position just by turning your feet in and out, shuffling the quad, have like a slight angle in and out generation by turning your hip in or out. You can get the outside or inner aspect of the quad. You might find some bits in there that you need to work on. So again, roll through, nice and smooth. Find the point, relax everything, really concentrate and relaxing, roll up to that point, find the start of it, and then slowly roll through, through to the other side. Okay, so we feel like that's eased up the quad, and we can move on to the next stretch. So with this one, we really like this stretch where we just sit down to begin with on our knees, kneeling, got completely and folded up shin underneath our body and just stick one leg out in front shift off to your sides you can still got my heel just next to my hip here that could be a nice stretch for you right here so nice and tall remember the spinal posture is always neutral and you can use your roller as something to just sort of you know give you something to lean on so what we need to do is reach back with your hands I'm paying close attention to always maintaining spinal alignment. So we've got a nice straight back here. And just edge your way back. You have the roller close to you so you can feel it like a pillow. It's sort of something that you can lean onto and give support. Make sure your knee stays in contact with the ground. As you lean back further and further, you should feel a bit of a stretch coming up the hip flexor and in the quad. So then just shuffle down. You can see that I'm just moving the foam roller further and further away as I inch my way down. And I keep a nice amount of control on that stretch for myself. So here I can just release my arms almost and just be here. And it's completely pain free. And there's not too much of a stretch right now. So I'm going to push it back a bit further. And just lean back in. Again, just check the posture of the spine and everything. It's always going to this straight neutral standing posture and then try and tuck your hips so try and roll your pelvic bone towards you to really anteriorly uh, tilt the pelvis so posteriorly tilt the pelvis to try and bring that strong stretch on further and then just hold it there if you want to push further and deeper into the stretch, you can. If you've been there before. If not, just stay where it's comfortable 
sort of medium intense stretch. So you've got complete control of it, you can feel it for ages and just let that muscle relax gradually over time. There's no rush in getting to the end of this, of laying completely flat on the floor. It's more a case of doing what's appropriate right now and allowing that stretch reflex in the muscle to slowly die down in, in its own time. It should be holding this for a good sort of 30 seconds to a minute, possibly even two minutes if you have, have the time and your spare time. You can roll out this one and you roll away from your stretching leg onto that elbow and you can easily kick out that leg. Fold up the other leg underneath itself, bring that heel close to the hip and then we start again. If you've got a roller available, you can lean on it now. So I've got that right in the crook of my back. I know it's there, I can lean on it a little bit. Got my hands for support as well. And then I'm just gonna inch my way down, going onto my elbows. I'm finding what works for me right now. Just really sort of posterior pel the pelvis. Try and bring that stretch on a bit earlier. You should feel it in the front of the quad and the hip flexor inch down a bit lower. And in your own time, continue as far down as you want to go and find a nice comfortable um, sort of level of stretch and then that's where we're just going to hold it and sit for a while. Again, just go over, you're not really going to pain or maximum stretch feeling, you're just going to sort of try and get to a comfortable level. Don't try and push it too fast, too quick, you're just going to let that body do its thing and allow your body to open up in its own accord. If you're ready, you can go a little bit further. Completely up to you how far you go. Just keep it in that moderate stretch range. We'll soon come out of this one. And then we'll move on working our hips. So we're going to do uh, the performance rolling that we did the other day and then we'll move straight on to a pigeon pose. That's really going to open up the glute muscles and everything else in and around the hip, all the hip stabilizers. And the pigeon pose is going to really help stretch those muscles out afterwards. So hopefully we'll be able to get into a nice sort of secure deep pigeon pose in a minute. Okay, so if you're ready, you can roll out this one again. You're rolling away from the stretching side onto your side. Pick out that leg. Make sure you haven't got any nasty sensations anywhere. If you feel like you've got a bit of pain in the back of your knee or anything like that, then next time, just don't go quite so deep into this one. Okay, so grab your foam roller. I'm just going to sit on it. And then square on. We're going to roll around the glute area. So everything we worked at the beginning of the workout, hopefully you felt those muscles switch on and get a good burn or a good bit of fatigue there. So you're going to find those muscles again and try and roll them out. You're just ro rolling gently backwards and forwards. And then again, you sweep the muscle and find out where you have problems. And if you find the problem or a little trigger point, not really a problem, but you know, you find the painful point, and then that's when you slow down and work particularly on this area. So we started off square on, and now give it a five or 10 degree tilt to one side, whichever you prefer, and then we roll through again. And you might find something this time. So we go through, sweep that muscle, right, identify the area that you want to work. Right, now go to the starting point of that area, slow right down roll through it just millimeter by millimeter and remember to relax actually so try and relax everything as you go through let go of that tension when you feel pain you tense up the muscle protects itself and it prevents you from massaging that trigger point properly particularly in glutes there's such thick muscle it's very easy to hide go through that trigger point all the way through the out the other side and we do one more time so we start roll through find that point Go to it, go to the start, roll through it, hold it there, and then 
out the other side. On the same side, get that leg across the other. And again, just putting the muscle in a different position, different level of stretch on it, and then we're rolling through, this time more so on the side. So we angle your body over a little bit more, and you can probably go a little bit higher into the side of the hip now for this one. Just roll around. You can really change the, the angle of your body to what suits you. So now we're sweeping through. We're finding places. Going right on that side of the hip if you want. Whatever works. Just then identify. You never know which angle it takes to try and hit these little trigger points. Quite tricky in the hips sometimes, I find. And then when you got it, right, okay, pin it down. Go through. Millimeter by millimeter, it's really slowly, and then remember to relax. There you go, sound a bit there. And relax through. Okay, swap sides. So square on, we start. Now tilt to one side with them both legs on the floor. And again, we did this on the other side. Sweep through. Find your trigger point. Slow it down and go through. Can be quite painful this. Just take your time. Really slow down. Kind of takes you to roll through the trigger point. Relax. Actually consciously relax the muscles. Let the roller do the work. And cross the other leg over. And again, you can get more of an angle, get more of the outer aspect of the hip. Whatever works for you. So it's sweeping, sweeping, sweeping. Finding the areas that you want to work on. And sit on that trigger point and wait for that to die down. Okay, so that's enough on those muscles. So that's pretty much legs done. They work. I think a bit of up and back. We'll do a bit more stretching just to finish off. So a few more minutes to go. We can keep going with everyone's around. We're going to thoracic spine. So we're always going for this nice sort of straight spinal posture. A lot of the time, a lot of us are crunched over. We drive a lot, we work at a desk. It's time to really open up those muscles. So just get into this bridge, put the, uh, the roller across the upper back. Stay where you feel comfortable, where you feel strong and stable. Just roll down through the upper back. It's about halfway, don't go too low. Don't go into the lower back too much. But the tricky one to control. Just keep the bum off the ground. And just roll through. And you can hug yourself to go across. Open up the shoulder blades. Give this roller access to your spine. Just to roll through. And then you can park yourself your bum on the floor. And move your spine sort of, uh, exposed to the roller. You can just rock back and forward. You can hold your head like so. Keep your elbows together. Keep your shoulder blades out of the way. And you're just trying to work that mobility of your back. And if you want, you can hold the stretch here. And just relax into it. Keep the abs tight at the bottom to try and stop you from overarching your lower back. And you're just trying to direct that tension into the upper back. So you're just hanging back here. Opening up. A thrust of spine, take it into extension. And you can change the vertebrae or so. Going to do that process of opening up, just moving about forwards or backwards, raising the head, lowering the head, getting movement in that joint of the spine. And always staying nice and comfortable with this one, just should feel nice and relaxing, it's nothing too major. If you're 
particularly limited in any way. And you might have thought it was just more of a challenge to so just stay within the, the comfort zone. And then onto our side, rolling through the lats and the, the uh, tricep this time. So start off at roughly elbow level, right on your side like so. I've got my arm above my head, directly above me. And I'm just rolling back and forward, little bits, little massages on the tricep itself. Like so. And you're just going to continue down that muscle. Give this one a good run through. So you get to some trigger points. And again, that's when you slow and do your work where you need it. You can roll forwards and backwards. So basically, I'm tilting. So I'm facing up high to the ceiling or facing down low. And that will just change the angle it's hitting the tricep so you get round the belly of the muscle. And then you might find something there that works for you. So if you're doing all of this, it's just working slowly towards your, tri your um, uh, lats. So again, you get up into the armpit area. There might be something a bit, a bit cheeky in there. Some little fibers hiding out there that are a bit, a bit painful. And again, we've got this whole rocking backwards and forwards motion, changing the angle, and then you're just gradually moving lower. You're just working at your own, own pace. And then it's the name of dog. <laughs> Point to pass comments. <laughs> Roll through till you get into your lats. And again, just be careful around the shoulder blade area. Sometimes that can be a little bit painful and a bit sore. Just be, maybe take some of the pressure off. You go through, but you're just edging your way down, down through that muscle. And you just feel, when you feel, you know, hit the right point and it feels good. And that's what you're doing really. Just kind of add you know, a bit of length there. Once you come up, sit into kneeling to that side. Just test what's happening with the mobility there. So how easy is it for you to get the side that you just massaged up? And is it that easy to get the side that you haven't massaged to the side of your head? So you can feel sometimes that, you know, we get a lot of tension down here and that stops us from doing things like pressing or reaching above our head and we sort of swimmers or something like that. We can definitely change the way that we do our strokes or just anything in general sometimes. So remember that feeling on this side, but so I haven't massaged this side yet, my left hand side. And now we're going to do the other one and see how that feels. You can also get a lot of tension for your tricep as well. You can also stop you from reaching up and overhead. And all of these little movements and things, you know, if we can move freely and just left, right, you can get problems when we do our chosen sports, whatever they may be. So again, starting high up, round about the elbow points. And then we're just going to edge our way down, oscillating back and forwards. Just lengthening out that tricep. I feel sixty something. Take a little bit of pressure off. It's a little bit sore. So I've got my elbow down to the ground so if you can see. So I can really control what's going on and get the move on. And down, so I'll just go right down. All the while just slowly inching my way down that muscle and we'll have a bit of the body, and up and down. Down into the very big belly of muscle there. Again, moving the angles, finding the point, twisting on it. You can get the other hand and press down if you want a little bit more, more pressure. And now into the armpit. So you know, the trick of transition there, you go into the armpit. Modulate your body weight there. You can hold on to the roll itself sometimes. You can actually physically roll it up and down by like using your hand to actually sort of get a bit trapped in there. Like so. Changing the body angle. But inching further and further down. That lat. Reaching up higher. And the angles. Very nice. 
Thanks for the point. And you can add a little bit of movement with the, uh, the arm. Yeah, just sort of running that muscle up and over that point. Further down, and then we reach the big belly of the actual lap itself. And then go through. And for most of us, that probably won't be a problem from that point on. So now we pop back up into kneeling. And let's test what's going on here. That's probably much freer and easier for me. So we have actually made some changes and hopefully feel a bit more loose around the shoulders and everything else. Just allowing us to have free movement uh, definitely helps in everything that we do. Okay, so I think that brings us to our time today. So thank you all for coming. It's good to see so many of you here. And uh, I look forward to seeing you all again on Friday. Thanks a lot for coming.